Hi everyone and welcome back to Fusion News. I'm Dr Hazel Lowe. I'm a plasma physicist working on fusion plasma diagnostics at Tokamak Energy in the UK. It's Wednesday the 22nd of March 2023 and this is your Fusion News update. Stories today include 1. Spring D creates infrastructure for laser-driven fusion. 2. Italy's ENI and CFS speed up plans for fusion energy. 3. UK and US launch $3 million fusion energy materials project. 4. New room temperature superconductor offers tantalising possibilities. And I also have a couple of bonus items for you at the end. 1. Sprint D creates infrastructure for laser-driven fusion. Germany's Federal Agency for Disruptive Innovation, known as Sprint D, is a funding body that develops the products, services and systems needed to support innovations that will address large-scale social, ecological and economic challenges, such as decarbonisation and energy security. They recently announced they founded a new company called Pulsed Light Technologies that will develop supporting technologies such as lasers, optics, diagnostics, robotics and computational resources. In addition to these specific technologies, the new company will also develop supply chains and infrastructure to support the fusion industry. Germany has two private companies working on laser driven fusion, Focused Energy and Marvel Fusion, both of which are Fusion Industry Association members. If you watched Fusion News last year, You'll remember the results from the National Ignition Facility in the US, where 192 pulsed laser beams were used to compress a deuterium-tritium fuel capsule, generating over 3 megajoules of energy, more than the 2 megajoules delivered by the laser pulse to the target. Focused Energy and Marvel Fusion are both taking slightly different approaches to laser-driven fusion compared to NIF, but both approaches will require common technology solutions. Rafael Laguna, director of Sprint DZ, a working and economically operated fusion power plant would be a truly disruptive innovation. Fusion could provide a relatively clean way of generating continuous power independent of local geologic factors and without relying on limited resources, in view of the goal to phase out the use of fossil fuels and the simultaneous rising demand for electrical energy. It makes sense for us to tap into public funds to accelerate the development of this technology. 2. Italy's ENI and CFS speed up plans for fusion energy. A new agreement between Italian energy company ENI and Fusion Industry Association member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, known as CFS, was widely reported on this week. CFS is a US-based company working in close collaboration with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to develop the first fusion pilot plant based on magnetic confinement fusion in a tokamak. Despite the exciting results in recent years from JET, East, K-Star and other tokamak facilities, no one has yet managed to achieve break-even. Or in other words, we've not yet been able to get more energy out from fusion reactions than the energy delivered to make and heat the plasma in the first place. CFS are designing and building a tokamak called Spark, which they intend to start operating in 2025. Spark is designed to be the first tokamak to achieve break-even and will be followed in the early 2030s by Arc, which is intended to be able to deliver electricity to the grid. The partnership with ENI is intended to speed up the industrialization of fusion to prepare to make the transition from a single proof-of-concept fusion plant to a global technology. NE CEO Claudio Descalzi said, We will see the first CFS power plant based on magnetic confinement fusion at the beginning of the next decade, with then almost two decades ahead to deploy the technology and achieve the energy transition goals by 2050. Having this technology at the industrial level, providing large quantities of zero carbon energy produced in a safe, clean and virtually inexhaustible way, will mean that we will contribute substantially to the energy transition challenge. This is why we are facing a potentially momentous technological breakthrough. 3. UK and US launch $3 million fusion energy materials project. The UK Atomic Energy Authority and the US's Oak Ridge National Laboratory have launched a $3.6 million US dollar partnership set to span five years. Oak Ridge's high flux isotope reactor will be used to bombard materials with neutrons and see how they are affected. Any material that would be used in the construction of a first of a kind fusion pilot plant must be able to deal with the harsh conditions present in a reactor. This does not just mean resistance to very high heat fluxes, but also resistance to large amounts of high energy neutrons. UK AEA's Director of Materials Research, Dr. Amanda Quadling, said the partnership will allow UK AEA access to ORNL's archive of existing irradiated materials, which include binary iron chromium alloys, advanced steels, silicon carbide composites and copper alloys. Alongside this, UK AEA will also be placing entirely new materials into the ORNL high flux isotope reactor, including new high temperature steels developed by both UK AEA and wider UK industry, permeation barrier coatings and welded materials. 4. New room temperature superconductor offers tantalising possibilities. There were several articles this week about a new result published in the scientific journal Nature. 
Researchers from the University of Rochester claim they have produced a new superconducting material that may be able to be used on fusion plasma devices in the future. A superconductor is a material that has zero resistance, which means you can put very high currents through it without it heating up. In magnetic confinement fusion devices, such as tokamaks and stellarators, the fusion plasma is confined by strong magnetic fields, which are generated by pushing huge currents through electromagnets around the device. However, electromagnetic coils made from conventional materials heat up significantly during this process, limiting how long the fusion device could be operated for and how frequently. In order to go from the experimental devices we have today to a pilot power plant that can reliably deliver electricity to the grid, magnetic confinement fusion devices need to be operated for much longer periods of time. So being able to build the magnet coils from a superconducting material should help to achieve this. The first superconducting materials discovered in 1911 had to be kept just above absolute zero in order to produce the superconducting behaviour. That's around minus 459 Fahrenheit or 272 Celsius. Ever since that first discovery, researchers have been looking for superconducting materials that operate nearer to room temperature so they can be applied to a much wider range of applications where these extreme cryogenic temperatures could not be maintained. The team at Rochester were able to get a small sample of a rare earth metal called lutetium to exhibit superconducting properties by doping it with a mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen and compressing it at room temperature to 10,000 times the atmospheric pressure, which is equivalent to 10 times the pressure at the bottom of the ocean. The next step is to try and modify the material to operate not only at ambient temperature but also ambient pressure. And now for the bonus items. One year on from the White House holding their event on a bold decadal vision for future and commercialization, there's still plenty more happening in the fusion space. Y.org has a great article about the challenges of machining parts to make up the inner surface of Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory's NSTX used for Tokamak in the US. Also, the UK's First Light Fusion CEO Nick Hawker has written a Back to Basics blog post about different elements that could be combined to fuel fusion reactions. And CGTN.com have a short documentary about the UK's spherical tokamak for energy production, where the presenter visited the proposed site where the machine is due to end construction in around 2040. That's all for Fusion News this week. Please subscribe for more Fusion News and check out the links in the description if you want further information. And thanks for watching.